Hey besties, I'm traveling right now in Vietnam and I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp.com. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe you're having trouble sleeping, having difficulty with the relationship, or suffering from low self-esteem. We've all been there. In my 20s, I hit a rough patch dealing with similar issues of my own. I knew I needed therapy and I took the extra step to get it. This is why I like partnering with brands like the sponsor for today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform that connects you with licensed professional therapists who are trained to listen and help you. You can talk to your therapist in a private, online environment at your convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. So how do you get started? Just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and you'll get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. You can then schedule secure video and phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages. Everything you share with your therapist is completely confidential. Trust me, speaking to a therapist is a great way to organize your thoughts, your feelings, and to move forward in life. BetterHelp is also committed to finding you great therapeutic matches so it's easy to change your therapist if needed. Join the 2 million plus people and take in charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. You can use my link to get 10% off your first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood. Now, on to the show. In this video, you're going to witness India's most unique street food in this country's holiest city. Even though there's so many people gathered, there is a certain tranquility to this place. Like this bread or bati stuffed with chickpeas, then cooked in flaming cow dung. Cow manure, when it dries out, it is an excellent combustible material. Well, let's back up a second. The city of Varanasi goes back over 5,000 years, before history, before tradition. Okay, we are right now in the streets of Varanasi. Going past me right at this moment is a human body. This is a holy city, filled with spirituality, ritual and old souls transitioning to their final resting place. As for my own soul, it quite possibly could use a cleansing in the sacred Ganges River. But first, I'm gonna find something to eat. Good morning and welcome to Varanasi. Right now we're on the river Ganges. This place is known for two things. One, it is one of the oldest cities in the world. And two, it's one of the holiest places in India with thousands of temples and of course, people flocking here to the river itself. Varanasi, also known as Benares or Kashi in ancient times, is the spiritual capital of India. All along the river and as you're walking here, there's just so many unique sights to see. People with different colors, patterns of tikka on their forehead, people with ceremonial clothing, people who are coming here to hopefully get here healed. It is something like I've never seen before. It's very exciting. Those who have journeyed to the sacred place perform rituals, descending to the river's edge by way of the Ghat, an ancient stone stairway. Even though there's so many people gathered, there is a certain tranquility to this place. Here they soak, plunge, or play in an effort to purify themselves. For most Hindu families, a vial of this water is kept in every house. So let's talk about food. In India, Hindu is the majority religion. And for some people, that means no meat. Basically, since this is a holy city, we're not gonna find any meat today. It's all gonna be vegetarian foods across the board. In just a moment, we're gonna pull up on shore, head into the city, and see what we can find. As soon as you get off the boat, people are here. Either they are putting clothes back on or stripping down to get in the water. But there's so many different ways to worship, to pray, and to give gratitude while you're here. Beyond that, you can buy candles, you can buy incense, it just like there's an unlimited number of things that you can see and discover while you're here. Today, we're starting our food tour with one of the city's favorite traditional breakfast options in a restaurant that goes back well over 100 years. We have come to our first food. This is called kachori sabsi. Kachori is the bread you see right here. Here, boiling, frying in this hot oil, and then the sabzi. Sabzi literally just means a vegetable dish. Here at the Rambandar, they have two, and we're taken on both. For four generations, people have been here making this dish. I mean, can you imagine before the airplane, before the car, before Facebook? I mean, is there anything before Facebook? Almost nothing. This place was here. This morning's eating utensil, kachori. It starts with a dough made of lentil paste and flour. Hand roll it and deep fry. Soon, that'll scoop up two types of sabzi. Alu sabzi with a potato base spiced with fried cumin, also potato, bay leaves, turmeric, and other secret masalas. Then chole sabzi is made of seasoned black chickpeas. They also have green chutney and they have a sweet tamarind sauce here too. Upon ordering, both sabzi are added to the bowl. Then the two sauces. 
style that with cachorri bread, and it's ready to eat. I've got some of the potato sabzi, some of the green chutney. I'm gonna try that bread soon, but let's go for this. Oh yeah, baby. My taste buds are alive. That is spicy, it's sour. There's just tons of different seasonings going on there. For such a meatless dish, it is so full of flavor and body and doesn't feel like anything is missing. I'm gonna put this on my kani and I'm gonna grab some of this bread now. The bread is brown, fried, delicious. Even by itself, it's a treasure. I'm gonna scoop up whatever will stick to the bread. A little potato, some chickpeas getting in on the party, all of it mixed together. Let's go for it. Crispy golden bread. Actually, I got some tamarind in there too. So we've got spicy, sweet, savory, sour, like every flavor pulling in different directions. There's just so much happening in here. This is less than a dollar. You could get about three of these for one dollar, and that is one heck of a breakfast. The last thing I want to point out here, these incredible bowls. It's made from a leaf. It's been pressed in some kind of a machine, so it holds your food perfectly. And then look, at the end of the day, perfectly biodegradable. Leaf plates, well, it's more of a salad now. Okay, we are right now in the streets of Varanasi. Going past me right at this moment is a human body. In the spiritual city of Varanasi, perhaps no endeavor carries more weight than that of the proper and sacred passage to the afterlife. Evidence of this is seen routinely in the city's narrow streets. As I told you, this place is full of mysticism. It's full of religion, faith, worship. A lot of people come here for the last days of their lives, and that is something we just witnessed. Devout Hindus believe that if a deceased one's ashes are laid here in the holiest of the seven sacred cities, their soul will be transported to heaven and escape the cycle of rebirth. This is pretty heavy stuff when all you're trying to do is grab a quick dessert. Let's talk about Lassi. Lassi is a drink, a snack, a dessert, and it's loved all over India. Here in Varanasi, they do it a little differently, and at this shop, they can prepare it 100 different ways. First, curd and sugar are added to a steel mixing vessel and hand churned with a bit of ice until it becomes thick and yogurt-like. This place is over 100 years old. That is what's so interesting about Varanasi. As you walk here, you feel the history. When the Lassi base is ready, he portions it into clay cups. You could just drink it like this, but I'm looking for more. He adds almonds, cashews, pistachios, and orange saffron water, transforming its colors. Now, more Lassi curd cream, and another complete layering of toppings all piled high before serving. Oh, 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 it's so sweet and delicious. Crunchy, delicious nuts give it some nice texture. There's something in there a little tart and a little just slightly sour. You can kind of half eat it and then half drink it. This is like stomach therapy. That breakfast we had, it was heavy and it was heartburn inducing, but this is what's gonna bring you back to life. This is kind of the deluxe version. It's got a little bit of everything, but here you can order 120 different types of lassi. Are they super fast? No, not really. But you got patience and if you've got time, they will bring you a lassi of your choosing and it's gonna be delicious. The other thing that makes this place kind of cute and unique is inside there's passport photos of a lot of people. My favorite part, well, the passport photos is it's a lot of pictures of people looking stern, a little scared. That is different from when people actually try this. For me, this is awesome. It's a great snack. It's a dessert. It's whatever you want it to be in your time of need. Our next food is not a meal. It's not a snack. It's basically an ancient breath mint using a strange, unexpected combination of ingredients. Hey, how are you doing? My, oh, right. I forgot. And we cannot shake hands, actually, because here he's making pun. His hands are actually stained from all the different ingredients and materials he's using to make this dish. This is pun. It was once thought of as a symbol of Indian royalty, and this food goes back more than 2,000 years. This third-generation shop is non-stop, kicking out different varieties of pond to patrons. I'm going with the deluxe version. You can try following along and making your own at home. Let's give it a try. Today, we're going to get silver pond made out of silver. Sunny in this moment has no idea what this is. Sunny, who does voiceover, knows everything. Let's cut to voiceover. First, the beetle leaf. This is always the base. Add kata, then chana, an infusion of saffron, and slaked lime to help binding of the leaf. He's put on a nut mixture. Oh, I love nuts, especially these nuts. How's your pond looking at home? Good? Okay, let's keep going. Next, rose petals that have been cooked in sugar. You all know already, rose is not my favorite ingredient ever, but that is a lot of rose petals. Then fruity green candy, 
some green chutney, more candy flavors, and finally this clump of magical flavor dust. Now, a slice of metal that indicates royalty and second place finishes. Oh, this is the silver. Guys, come on, this isn't any old pun. This is the silver pun. I know what you're thinking. Something usually has to get the bronze pun. And maybe I can't get the gold one, but I'm gonna keep saving in one day. Lastly, garnish it with cherry and coconut shavings. And this is the most packed, confusing after dinner mint I've ever seen. This is a very unique food. I think a lot of people eat it here after dinner or for like a fun snack or to freshen their breath. It's uh, great after a cigarette if you're trying to hide your smoking habit from your wife or girlfriend, I'll tell you that. Oh, that guy just walked through the camera. I've got it right here. It's a one biter. Let's go for it. Wow. It's so much flavor. I thought the roses would be the worst part. It's so syrupy, over sweet, minty, and then you have the leaf itself, which is a little bitter and minty too. I like what koalas eat a little bit. It's such a big, overpowering bite. I don't know how people handle that. Can I tell you something? Couldn't even taste the silver. That is a wild experience here on the streets of Varanasi. Very nice. We've come to our next location. Right here, we have Bati Chuka. Yes? Batichuka. Nailed it. Our next street food is cooked in flaming cow dung. But you'd never expect it from how it looks. Let's back up. First, a wheat dough is stuffed with a filling made from chickpea powder, raw mustard oil, harum seeds, red pepper corn, and red chili pickle. Shape that into a ball. As the dough balls pile up, they light up a pile of dry cow dung. The use of dry cow dung as a fuel for fire goes back thousands of years. They're dry and extremely flammable. Turns out, if you want, you can cook on those dung patties too. As you know, in India, cows are revered, so technically this is holy shit. I probably have to take that out of the video. Cow manure is remarkable for many reasons. You put it in the soil, it helps the vegetables and plants to grow big and strong, but when it dries out, it is an excellent combustible material. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it's cow dung. Isn't that bad or what, unhygienic? The fact is, it's a million degrees. Beyond that, all the cow dung is made out of organic matter anyways. They're eating grass and watermelons, grains. So it's basically like we're burning plants anyways. They just happen to have passed through a cow. When the bread is ready, dust off the excess ash and they're ready for the next step. To serve, our vendor grabs a bowl and adds choka, or potato curry. It's a mix of veggies, spices, roasted eggplant, tomato, and boiled potatoes. Add a bit of green chutney on top and then the bread, dipped in ghee before serving. All right, guys, I have my next food right here. It looks tempting, hot, and spicy. And let me tell you, it is 106 degrees today. It's the perfect weather for spicy food. Let's try it out. Oh, what am I experiencing? It's so powerful and so intense. It's heavy, and greasy, spicy. There's something super sour in there. What's interesting is, you know, if I was in Vietnam, they would have some herbs to balance out the meal. Here, our balance is just straight onion. It's like, oh, is that too spicy? Just eat raw onion then. Gladly. So inside, you can see the filling. It is that roasted chickpea flour. It's nutty. It has a very thick texture. The chutney is bringing something hot, something sour. In many countries you go to, your average meal is gonna be either designated, spicy, savory, sweet, but in India, they're not afraid to do all three. This is food that wakes you up at night as you remember the flavor in your dreams and you're, you are, you're in a seasonal masala sweat. Overall delicious, but man, that is a powerful food with a kick on these streets. I'm sweating from my arms. The Hindu religion itself has several sub-branches, though some tenets of the faith seem constant. Most devout Hindus are vegetarian, though dairy consumption is still allowed and enjoyed widely. For those who follow the Hindu faith, the cow is to be revered, and it's seen as a mother figure. The cow provides milk and gives life. This is also why it's not unusual to see cows in the street, even in major metropolitan cities. Right now we are deep in the alleyways of Varanasi. This is a local Indian confectionery where they're making about a dozen different desserts that people can buy on the street. India is famous for its desserts, and their massive dessert-making factories are something to behold. This is called Langletta. On the outside, it actually it looks like a delicious wheat flour dumpling, but it's a kind of a dessert dumpling. Here, in another small corner of Varanasi, the team from Jai Kopal Mishtan Bandar confectionery have been producing this unique dessert for over three decades. The filling is prepared right on the spot, starting with koya, a type of cooked reduced milk. 
Next, add sugar and ground cloves. That's what I love about India is whether it's meal food or dessert food, they're always crossing boundaries and borders and kind of taking it to places I certainly wouldn't expect. When the filling is thoroughly mixed, it's stuffed inside rolled flour sheets and contorted into their signature shape. Now, the healthy part. Deep fry for 10 to 15 minutes until they turn a heavenly, crispy, golden brown. In a separate pot filled with sugar syrup, milk is added to remove impurities of previously cooked food particles. After adding a touch of rose essence, it's ready. Submerge the fried dessert, saturating it completely. Right here, I am sitting in the alleyway. Not so long ago, a cow just walked through here, and I'm hoping that it comes back to say hello. I'm not sure if this is part of the cow's natural diet, but it could be. So this is still hot and just dripping with decadence. I'm just gonna take a big bite and see what happens. Whoa, oh, there's such a mix of things going on. This ready part is fantastic. God. It is filled with a hot syrup. It's like napalm. You gotta be careful. It will leak out onto you. The best way to have any dessert in India is still blazing hot. I'm gonna take another bite of that. Not a ton of clovey flavor. Actually, there's some dairy in there, which is nice, soft, creamy, and then there's the rose. So you had this cool looking brown bottle of the souls of 10,000 fields of roses, and he poured that into the ghee. But also, I think it's been put inside of the stuffing too. Holy cow. I mean, actual, uh, there's a holy cow right there. That's not even the one that came by earlier. That's a calf. Where are these cows giving birth? Are they just doing it on the street? I mean, that would be the most ultimate insane thing to see in the streets of India. Back to this. Let's take another bite. Oh, no, I got a mouthful of clove. I like the clove. It tastes like eating Christmas candy or something. An extraordinary dessert. I didn't even know this existed. Getting to try it as you see a calf walk by, even better. We have one more left. Let's get to it. We're now approaching our final food of the day. If I just show you each of the ingredients independently, you would never guess what all this is about to become. It has been an incredible journey throughout this entire day, from the morning by the entrance to the river where people go and take a dip and worship, all the way through these narrow pathways and alleys full of ancient history and foods and restaurants that have been around for hundreds of years. Here we have the final meal. This is called Chat. Chat is a family of savory treats that originated in India. They're considered snacks or starters. It's hard to explain. It's usually like a snacky item in India. It can be crunchy and dry, or it can be kind of soupy like this. The soupy version is called tomatar chat, and it packs a powerful, heavy punch. It is a beautiful mixture of ingredients. There is so much flavor in here, and it is so heavy inside. This thing is like one-third butter. On a hot tawa, they add ghee and ginger, then a mushy mash of tomato and loads of spices. They mix in coriander, garam masala, chat masala, red chili powder, pink salt, and even more ghee. Mix, mash, and mix again until it's ready. This is the base for this dish, and it'll be put together with even more ghee, sugary syrup, and a bit of lime. Hit it with a few more doses of chat masala and a tomato gravy. For texture, fried crackers garnished with even more coriander. Then, this highly concentrated flavor bomb is ready for action. This is one of the only places in India where you're gonna find something like this. I'm gonna try it out. Oh, that's delightful. Uh-oh, uh oh we're doing a U-turn. It's possible we're causing a traffic jam, but no worse than the cows. Let's talk about this. Very tomatoey, but it's not like a tomato sauce in its texture at all. Then there's crunchy elements in there. There's some fresh elements because he put some herbs in there, but let's be honest, this is a heartburn factory right here. So much tomato, so much acidicness that's blended with a ton of masala, spices, and that really heavy ghee. There's pools of fat in here, but they found a way to make it taste kind of balanced. That is our final food for today. I love it. Before departing Varanasi, I have one more order of business to attend to. The Ganges, iconic, holy, inviting to all who seek it. The New York Times articles will tell you to steer clear, writing the laundry list of afflictions that await you in these silty waters. But these are the same people who tell you not to eat street food. To live is to risk, from the moment you wake up to the moment you nod off at night. For me, I'll never be fulfilled telling myself that at least I played it safe. At least I dodged a hypothetical calamity or some imagined outcome. Instead of certainty, I'd rather have a story for life.
way, the moment I stepped out of the Ganges, I slipped on the algae soak steps, hit my leg, and I couldn't walk for two weeks. Somehow, this holy healing river completely kicked my ass. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. This is my man Pradeep. This is his shop. He is the boss of pun. That could be a, a new Food Network show. Boss of pun. Who needs boss of cakes? Or what is it? Cake boss? Pun boss. I'm just noticing there's a painting over here that says 75 years old. I'm curious. Why not just like write the year it established? Because now you have to update the year every year. I don't think they've updated that for a while. I would absolutely recommend this. Hey, how you doing? I don't think that hunk was for us. I think that was for someone else. Jesus. <laughs> Give me a gosh dang heart attack. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. When's our stop? There's no pull cord. <laughs>